Why do I do what I do? Well, uh, as a young child, I grew up with uh, a lot of mechanical stuff, Meccano. My father was a historic car enthusiast and uh, his father-in-law was uh, an automotive and then aviation engineer. So I was in, grew up in an environment of mechanical stuff and cars and it uh, just caught my imagination from that young age. And it's something which has stayed a fascination for mechanical things and what we can make uh, using our uh, idea from the mind and then with our hands to actually create a machine which, which works and which functions, especially when you look at the size of a mechanical watch, which is a relatively simple mechanism in theory on paper, but actually it's very, very difficult to make it work well, make it work reliably, reliably and to actually deliver the... I think we've cut that sentence. <laughs> it's, 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 it's lovely. Michelle, could I get a glass of water? <laughs> <laughs> So why choose uh, horology as a, as a career was uh, something which, uh, which came at quite a young age. Um, when I grew up in the UK, there was no watchmaking, of course, it was, uh, it was all finished. So around 1980, 81, you had a, a period of uh, crisis in industry. A lot of um, engineering was, uh, was being reprofiled. There was new technology starting to appear and a lot of antiquated uh, methods were, were going out. So while my passion was for mechanics and initially cars, I realized that um, this was all in movement and I couldn't quite see where that was going to go. And then a chance uh, occasion, uh, an antique clock shop in the, the sort of the, the Cotswolds, we call it in the UK, uh, where there were the machines to make the parts. And then there was this artistic side of seeing an antique clock uh, as both a decorative object with craftsmanship and hand handwork, but also that precision and the and the mechanics going on behind. So for me, that was that was the turning point really, and I thought uh, it would be great if I could learn how to make a clock. Uh, initially, at that age, around 12, 13 years old, um, because from there, perhaps I could get people to commission to make a new clock, because the ones I was looking at would. 100, 200 years old. So it'd be nice to, to make something uh, uh, in a contemporary contemporary format. So uh, the school I went to, um, uh, the secondary school I was at was actually all boys. There was 900, uh, 900 boys school. And so it was all that sort of stuff there. And uh, I discussed with my parents and they were quite open and my mother was an art teacher, so that sort of creative side, she, she was uh, understood, understanding. And my father, uh, as a chemist, was also, you know, uh, they were quite happy for me to sort of choose my own career path, something which I would enjoy and have pleasure doing. And they went to the careers master and uh, asked about horology, and the guy gave them a bit of a blank look, because obviously it was not a word he'd ever come across in the dictionary. And so little bit of pushing and uh, they found there was still a school in London and later on I learned that that was the originally the the uh, school of horology which had been in Clerkenwell the historic area of London for watchmaking and clock making and then it gradually been moved out to a suburb and uh, so I decided that uh, that would be that would be a great starting point to go to this uh, to the school and study technical horology. So on a, on a daily basis, um, you know, with Robert and myself been working together for more than 20 years now, so since the summer of 1999, and we had this crazy idea um, with uh, a new millennium to, to seek innovation and to develop new ideas. So, you know, even now, 20 years later, uh, quite a lot of my time is... Uh, uh, working with the team on technical projects, on innovations, on development. Um, so we, we meet up, of course, we have proper engineers and scientific people uh, who uh, help Robert and myself to actually uh, contain and channel the ideas and then develop them into uh, uh, something, uh, an actual mechanism, and then to test the mechanism. So so that's, that's a fair proportion. Um, we meet up 
two, three times a week uh, for, uh, for a bunch of meetings to, to steer and orient, orient our team. And, uh, and then there's also the side, because uh, between Robert and myself, as a native English speaker, I do more representation. So uh, I also travel quite a lot to get out on the, in, you know, in the, in the wild, meet collectors, uh, talk to people, uh, talk about also about horology because um, in the 20 years since we started working together there's a new generation of young people who were just born at that time so with uh, the sort of millennial generation so there's it's always uh, a good time to to talk about the story to talk about why why is time important why is watchmaking important why do we think mechanical watchmaking and the skills and uh, crafts which are behind it, why should we preserve those for the future? Mm -hmm.